Who uses UAS? Everyone now. But there are different types of UAV operations. There are public operations that include governmental uh, entities and there are limited to certain government operations and within the U.S. airspace. There are civil operations that are non-governmental. This is the most of the commercial use uh, UAS. This is also flying UAS for research as we will, for education. We are civilians and even if our uh, university is a public university and can operate after the public operations, um, it can also uh, have um, operate under the law that is uh, um, concerning the commercial use of the UAS, that more about the laws and the regulation will be covered in the next lecture. Um, and there are the exception exceptions, so the Mulder air- aircraft uh, that is used for hobby and recreational only. Then the same aircraft can, uh, the same UAS can be used as the civil operations and as the model aircraft and different regulations apply to them. And also I can see the hobby and regulation. Are you flying your drone for fun or are you getting something out of it? Any data or even uh, education or um, um, compensation? The FAA is a really important uh, shortcut if you are dealing with the UAS. This is Federal Aviation Administration. And this map shows the national airspace system. It's already huge, extensive. Everyone uh, flies and everyone knows how many airports are there, how many aircrafts. This is the network that includes all the air navigation facilities, equipment and services and landing areas. And also it produces the charts and it provides information services. It also makes rules and regulations and procedures. It provides the technical information and manpower and material. So everything that is, um, is related to the airspace over the United States is called National Airspace System. Lately, there are new visitors to this, uh, to this airspace, UAS. And the Federal Aviation Administration needed to deal with new visit- visitors. It needed to integrate the UAS into the national airspace system. So what was needed? First, there were gaps in the law. The law was created for manned aircraft and did not concern the cases that can be, uh, can emerge when we're using unmanned aircraft. So first, the review of the current policies and regulations and even environmental impact or privacy considerations and standards, the gaps needed to be determined. Um, And then after we see what's needed, there needs to be development of new regulation standards, policies, and also technologies uh, for the use in the national uh, airspace. If you are use, if you are making new regulations and standards as also new technologies, the development of the guidance material and training is needed. Also, the certification that has been already established for manned aircraft. But right now, there is a whole new area for, uh, for educational, for guidance, for manpower, and for airmen. More information is, uh, you can find under this link. There is the whole story about the integration of UAS in the, um, in the national um, airspace system. Now the question that you could probably you could ask yourself from the beginning of the lecture or even before you sign up for the course, can I use the drone? There is a lot more <laughs> into that that, I, that can be covered in this uh, lecture. But... There is a really great resource, an educational campaign that's called Know Before You Fly, that provides um, prospective aerial users with information and guidance. They need to fly uh, safety and responsibly. This is a really fun website. You can play games there. We have a lot of infographics that can um, 
it can serve as the first step into getting to know the regulations and also the safety rules. And you ha always have to remember that there are different rules that apply to recreational business and government entities. You can click on these links and it will direct you to the definition of the recreation use and the different rules that are uh, right now in operation that were created by, by FAA. The new regulations that were effective in 2016, uh, the end of August, it was a huge deal. Everything changed and the manufacturers, the sales of drones just boomed. It's called uh, Part 107. You can also click on it. And we're going to cover a lot of that in the next lectures that lecture next week. That's going to be entirely dedicated to the rules and regulations about uh, flying a drone. Now, even more extensive uh, subject, what are the, the UAS used for? And you can already imagine the, the variety and the multitude of the uses. There is the pub public use aircraft, and you can see that what's listed here, everyone uses it. And then um, uh, we are here, the state university, of course, the law enforcement, but the, all every single uh, governmental department right now is interested in the improvement of their functionality uh, by uh, the use of the unmanned aircraft. And there is the whole entire new topic that is not going to be covered in this, um, in this course at all, but the drone is the kid of the military. So the military was, is the one, the, the entity that fueled the research that uses the most of the drones, especially uh, with the um, uh, long endurance and the, the drones that are not really available for the commercial use, for the civilian use. Uh, this is a short movie that shows like development of and why uh, development of the UAS use in the military and what is the drone used for. Uh, just like uh, the side note and interesting, it's um, it's a it's a little short cartoon, so it's just fun to watch. Now the civilian application fields. Um, the font is pretty small, but it is a really interesting infographic because it shows not only the areas where the UAS are mostly used in, but also what is the stage of the development. Of course, it was created in 2016, so it can be a little bit outdated, and I have, I have my own ideas what other colors should be used here. Uh, so all of, uh, all of you probably heard about the Amazon that is trying to, to deliver everything by drones, and you can see here that the only area that is uh, marked as the early stage development is the mail and small package delivery. It's still... Mm, it's still not even on the horizon about the um, solutions and the legislation that like the it's not going to happen overnight that we're going to have the packages delivered by a drone but what ha is happening already uh, and it's the middle stage development is all this gray area so the construction and real estate images and monitoring everything that needs uh, um, to be updated with the high temporal resolution, you need to fly over areas, see the areas frequently. Uh, the drones are used for that. The emergency management, uh, also when you need a prompt response and the areas are hard to reach um, in any hazards, the, uh, the drones are always safer to use than any manned missions. There is oil and gas, uh, gas exploration. There is also extensive use of the UAS in mining industry. Uh, and there is a huge area of filmmaking and media uses. Um, there are the whole companies that are just using drones for wedding photography or just taking uh, great videos of aerial of, of uh, properties of just movie making for not for research but for fun and for art and for uh, media uses for some uh, providing information about the area mm, there is also infrastructure monitoring 
and wildlife uh, wildlife and environmental modeling this is more coupled together like you can you can monitor a lot of the things it depends what is the drone or the sensor looking at uh, there uh, there is uh, extensive use of the drones for meteorological purposes. You can imagine not only pictures can be taken with the drone, but the drone can also collect the data from um, uh, about, uh, it can fly in the air and collect samples uh, of the chemical content. It can measure the wind speed. It can measure the temperature. So you can provide a lot of information that is useful for weather forecasting and meteorological research. And now we move into the areas that are right now in the late stage of development, so that are in full swing. Uh, uh, and this is public safety and border patrol. This is something that's not going to be covered in the course, but it's already the drones are used by uh, police, by the safe, safety enforcement agencies. What is our domain? It's aerial photography and also partially precision agriculture. The field that we will be testing, uh, performing our test flight for the course, it's it's an agricultural field. So we can see and we can make a lot of uh, projects that will be concerning the agricultural topics. And the precision agriculture, it's not only about mapping, but for example, about um, um, planting seeds or um, spreading the fertilizers. So the UAS can be used in precision agriculture in multiple, multiple areas. And their aerial photography, I'm not going to talk a lot about it now because it's going to be covered in a um, couple other lectures.